Questions and comments? Uh, Kestio Kamal-Tyre, uh, the Honourable Member for uh, Edmonton Strathcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I want to give some compliments to my, to my colleague. It was probably the least self-aware speech I've ever heard in the House of Commons. Um, he talked a lot about lies that the Liberals have, have done, and I, 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 I agree that the Liberals are not honest and have not shown that they have a lot of moral fortitude. But I want to quote from a Twitter account that, that many of us follow. It's called, Pierre is lying to you. And he found that in just three days... I, I'm just going to take it that maybe we're talking about some, someone else, uh, but if we're talking about specific people in the chamber, that we, that we not use their name. Uh, the, even, if it, even if it's quoted in a Twitter, we can't use that as well. You remember for Edmund Strathcona. Just to be clear, it wasn't uh, quoting anyone in particular. It's the name of an account. Uh, this particular account says that the leader of the official opposition lied 215 times in the House of Commons over three days. I didn't say that, Mr. Speaker. The Order, and I know we're quoting information on here. Uh, the Honourable uh, Member for uh, Cold Lake. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Fort McMurray, Cold Lake. Um, you can't do indirectly what you can't do directly, and so quoting someone saying that someone is lying is not parliamentary. Thank you. And that, that, but that, is, that is correct. The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary. On the same point of order, then you should have stood in this place when the member opposite giving his speech said several times lying. So, Mr. Speaker, if that is the new standard, then I would ask that... I'm sorry that, I'm, that I just tipped the chair and I wasn't in the chair when the majority of the Honourable Member's uh, speech was, uh, was going. Uh, the Honourable Member uh, was here when I, I did take, the, take over the chair. I apologize for missing that. I will try not to miss that next time. The Honourable Member Edmund Strathcona, uh, I, I know the Honourable Member still hasn't got her question out, so the Honourable Member Edmund Strathcona. Thank you. Well, I guess one of my questions, he, he, you know, he spoke about, about lying, he spoke about um, embarrassment, all of these things. And of course, for, for me, I think, well, pox on both their houses, to be perfectly honest, because this is, this is a debate in this place on which is worse, and that's not very helpful for Canadians that are struggling right now. But one of the things that his leader said just recently in the media is that he thought that it would be a gift to humanity if a nuclear facility was bombed. And this would obviously escalate war and cause unbelievable pain and suffering to innocent people. I wonder if the member agrees with that statement and finds that to be an embarrassment on the world stage. Honourable Member for Calgary Forest Line. The only embarrassment is this NDP who, rather than condemning people who are sympathizers of a terrorist regime that, continue, that will burn a Canadian flag and say death to Canada, that, and that member brought up a word. She said, no moral fortitude. No moral fortitude is what I would describe the NDP leader as. Someone who faked and put on this dramatic scene that they ripped up their supply and confidence agreement, only to flip-flop two weeks later and tape it right back up, just so that they could win a seat in, in, uh, in Manitoba and use those people in Manitoba. That, that is no moral fortitude. And continue to prop up the most corrupt government in Canadian history. Maybe what they need is, is, is some moral fortitude and some clarity to Canadians that we will not stand up to anti-Semitism anymore in this country.